Hey folks, it's Mangirl. Welcome back to the channel. I'm checking out yet another motor for my lightweight three inch freestyle quads, but I promise you this one will be a bit different because I am using a very unique motor. This is the F30 from T Motor or T Hobby, and it is their F30 4S. So they do make these in the 3S, 4S, or 6S version. They don't advertise on the box the actual KV, but this would be a 4100 KV motor. And the first unique thing is that the motor actually comes in a very, very interesting package and you do get four motors in this package. Opening it up, we have the motors well protected. Next, we have a lot of bags. The first bag has some spare screws, washers, and bushings that are used to attach the top bell to the base. Yep, you heard right. This motor uses screws as opposed to C-clips. Next bag, we have some long screws. Next bag, we have some short screws. And then finally, we have screws that connect your prop to the actual motor. Taking a closer look at the motor, some of those unique features should really start to jump out. The first thing I notice is up here. Yes, this uses T-style propellers, but typically we have two screws and one pin. This kind of reverses that. It's got two pins and one screw, which should make prop installation and removal a lot simpler. The one big drawback though is the middle screw is a two millimeter. Most T-style smaller props have a 1.5 millimeter center screw, which means, or center pin, which means you actually will have to drill them out or look for that elusive two millimeter type of propeller. I do also notice the screw that holds the motor together. Typically this size of motor uses those tiny fiddly C-clips, not this one. This makes mater, mater? motor maintenance a lot uh, simpler. And then this is really nifty as well. The motor leads are attached to this PCB, which makes motor cable replacement. So once they start to get too small because you move them across different quads, you can easily replace the entire motor cable by just unsoldering it from this over here. Unfortunately, like most of the T motors, this is a two piece design. So that will impact durability a little bit as well. The motor cables are 24 gauge and they are roughly four inches in length. Doing a weight check, the motor by itself weighs 9.85 grams, not too bad given the additional features. The motor installation is complete into my Quadmela Siren F3 split. This is a lightweight sub 250 gram three inch freestyle quad. And the motor's installed just like any other motor would install. The only issue I had was with the motor screws. The screws that came with the motors were too long, so I had to go rummaging through my spare parts box and find some shorter screws. Do bear that in mind if you wanna use these motors on smaller quads like this. And you can see our Cyclops of a propeller. That looks pretty cool. I did also go ahead and do a fresh pit tune using my go-to software, which is Pit Toolbox. I will give you links in the description to my Betaflight configuration file, along with the actual PID and filter tune. And you can see I am still running my lightweight D-Case 04 Pro Air unit. It hasn't failed me yet. All the flight footage you're looking at right now is coming straight off of the Goggle 3 Goggle V recording or coming off of the 04 Air Unit Pro onboard recording. I don't use any kind of image stabilization. So whatever you're seeing is what the quad is doing as it flies around. First impression with the motors is that they flew pretty well. No weird flight characteristics, no shakes, no wobbles. Really, they flew as I would expect given our custom pit tune. I did notice that these motors have massive power and I've tested many, many motors in the past and these motors are out of this world. Anytime I do my full throttle punch outs, anytime I'm doing some of these freestyle maneuvers, the quad just goes into orbit. The amount of altitude this thing gains on full throttle punch out is it's just, it's wild. It's completely unexpected. And it shows in the amount of power draw. Full throttle punch out on these motors pulls roughly 60 amps. I've never seen a motor of this size pull that kind of amperage. You know, typically other, other motors I've tested pull 38, 50, maybe 52. 60 is it's just crazy. Unfortunately, try and fly around in a slower kind of precise manner is where I ran into some difficulties. So trying to fly around this TP sort of structure, I really struggled. It took so much focus to nurse the quad around this obstacle. 
And even with all my concentration, you can see a lot of bobbing up and down in the quad. It just felt very uncomfortable and very nervous to, to do this. And of course, high power means lower flight time. I kept overdraining my batteries because of just battery dropping really quickly at the very end. One time I went down to about two volts per cell, other time went 2.8, 2.9 volts per cell, both times resulting in a crash. In terms of durability, no issue. I crashed many, many, many times. And other than some broken propellers, the motors still look brand new. I really enjoy flying these motors. They were super smooth, super powerful, and they also have features that you typically only find on larger motors, like the single screw attachment of the propellers. The fact that you don't have to deal with those fiddly little C-clips when servicing the motors and the fact that you can replace the motor cables very easily because they attach on that PCB. All very, very welcome features. On the flip side, you do have to drill out your propellers or find that elusive two millimeter shaft hole type of propeller. But the big deal breaker for me and my type of flying is the lack of low throttle fine control. That's something that I noticed right away on these motors. And that's why I'm not sure if I'll be flying these going forward. So let's ask ourselves, who are these motors really for? In my mind, they're for racers, you know, racers who are typically going full throttle, full throttle, full throttle, or perhaps even hardcore freestylists who just want all out power and don't really need that fine throttle control and don't mind giving up a good minute to minute and a half of flight time. I think you can probably get three and a half minutes of flight on this, maybe if you're lucky four minutes, but that's it. So hopefully you liked this video, make sure to like, subscribe and comment and stay tuned for more videos.